Winkle, how are you feeling and how valuable is this week for you just preparing for the World Series? Yeah, I mean, I think the word is valuable. Uh, it's very valuable. Every day um, that I can get off my feet and not running and just treating this is, is huge. I mean, obviously, I didn't play in game six, so that was a day I didn't have to run. I can still hit. I can do all that kind of stuff. It's more of once I take that first run step a few days ago, that's when everything kind of just flares up in my ankle. So I'm now at three straight days of not running and just only treating it. So every day is going to be better. I mean, it's with all injuries, treatment and rest and time away from the initial injury is only going to be better. So uh, we're just trying to do the best we can to get it into a spot that'll be ready to go on Friday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Dave Vasse. Go ahead, David. Hey, Freddie. Um, everybody's wondering what the biggest difference is this season than the past two seasons. I know every year is unique. And another part to that question is uh, you've talked about just whoever gets hot makes a deep run like this. Does it feel like 21 with the Braves? Um. What's different, um, I mean, we did everything different going into the DS as a group of players. Um, I think that's what's different from the last two years, obviously, with the watch parties and just hanging out and making sure we're together. Um, I don't know if you can really control baseball in the sense of doing anything different. I mean, we got hits with runners in score position, we pitched, and we did all that. That's what happened. Um, but I would say when I look at the 21 Braves, we had Eddie Rosario, Rosario hit. 580 against the Dodgers, I think, that year. And this in the NLCS, it was, I mean, obviously Tommy won the MVP, which was incredible, but you had Shohei, Mookie, you know, everyone was kind of in months and everyone was just hitting. So um, I think we've just been playing really good baseball throughout the course. I mean, I think it was huge, like in Colorado, and we played the Padres before Colorado. It's just, we had a lot of good things and good momentum leading into the playoffs. Um, and I think we just kind of carried it over. and. A lot of guys are swinging that well. Obviously, our bullpen's been amazing. Jack's thrown a couple great games. Young Mo's been looking good. Walk looked great in New York. So a lot of things have just kind of come together for us to, to get to this point and be able to have these sweatshirts on. Thank you. Great sweatshirt. Yep. <laughs> Next question is from Jack Harris. Go ahead, Jack. Hey, Freddie, do you, um just with the week off and the rest on the ankle, like do you have a sense of like how much it can – progress by Friday or is that something that once you get there kind of just you, once you start running on it again see how yeah, it feels I think it's more of I mean I feel pretty good walking you know and I feel okay hitting you know um it's all the more movement stuff of running and stuff like that but I'm not, I wish I could give more definitive answers of what I will feel like on Friday um but I just don't have that because I've never sprained an ankle before if I if I had broken a wrist and it was coming back from that, I could, help, I could at least give you guys exactly how I feel and what I could look forward to. But right now I'm on my third day of not running. So I think every day, like today, I'll, I'll go through, I'll do Dino drills, I'll hit, I'll obviously have a full day of treatment. So, but I, I'm not going to run because I want to get this thing as calm down as I possibly can to have the best, get my best self and be ready to go by game one. So um, just trying to, do the best I can. I wish I could give more definitive answers of what I would feel like in three days. But again, when you get hurt, I think every day away from that injury and every day you treat it and it's only going to be better. So I'm hoping that these pretty much six, seven days that I will have off since I didn't play in the last one will be what I need to be able to go. Yeah. And then when you talk about, you know, you guys having as many guys swinging the bat well right now as you do, is that something that's just like the randomness of baseball? Is there something that you're seeing team-wide whether it's approach or work that kind of leads to that or, or how do you explain well, our, it? our biggest thing that we harped on that uh week be before between the end of the season and the ds was hit the fastball and we worked on hitting fastball hitting velo facing trajects facing velo and the traject in the cage and i think that's kind of helped us because i think if you looked at the numbers of the last couple post seasons we didn't hit the fastball like we did during the course of the regular season so i think that was a big big thing and you know obviously Manaya in game six we that was our, in our hitters meeting was take the fastball away from him he loves the fastball if you can get him down off the top um and try to take that fastball away from him you, well, we we would be in a good spot and we were able to knock him out in the first couple innings so I think it's just more of I think approach and sticking to the plan we've been sticking to the plan of what we've been talking about in the hitters meeting and that's being on the fastball because if you're on the fastball then you can be able to adjust off that 
Uh, and I think we've just done a really good about doing that and, and sticking to our approach and our plan. Yeah. Thanks, Freddie. Yep. Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Freddie, I'm on my 300th day of not running. It really does help the ankles. <laughs> How difficult was it to sit and watch when, when you weren't in the lineup the other day? Um, what have those conversations with Dave been like? Yeah, so um, I, I kind of knew uh, on the off day going into game six that I wasn't going to be playing. Um, it's just kind of how I was feeling in game five. Um, usually I can get back then, like a week or so ago, I could get through four or five innings before I was having trouble walking. And obviously in game game five, it started happening pretty much right after my first at bat. So it just uh, it was just kind of progressing to making it really hard for me to get through a game. So uh, with the position we were in um, and hopefully being able to win on game six, that's what we were obviously hoping for, that it would give me the best opportunity with that rest to be ready for game one. Um, obviously, as a competitor and, you know, being with the guys all regular season, you want to be on the field with them. But. You also have to understand, believe me, when I walk through those front doors of our clubhouse, everything gets checked up the fr at the door, and all I want to do is win. And I'm obviously compromised with my ankle, so um, if I'm not in the lineup on that day, that means the best option is with our guys, and I have the most confidence. I mean, you've seen I haven't played three games, and I think they're averaging about nine runs a game without me in there. So um, I have great confidence in everybody, but – um, they just wanted me to rest up and get ready for game one. And um, luckily, the group of guys that we have, the depth, months being able to play multiple positions. We have so many guys that can bounce around. Um, and obviously, guys are swinging the bat great. So, yeah, it was tough. But I think it was just better off for the situation with my ankle was to hopefully win that game and give me more time off than trying to gut through a, another game. You mentioned the the preparing for the fastball. How much of the game planning uh, has been about not chasing and plate discipline? Because you guys walked 46 times in that NLC. And I think that's being on the fastball. If you're on the fastball on the top of the zone or in your lane that you're looking, then you'll be able to check off other pitches. Um, you know, I think with Manaya, we were look, like the righties were looking up and closer to be able to lay off the change up down and away, you know, so it's more about like you can talk about approaches and hitters meetings like we do all the time, but I think the key is applying that in the game. And I think that's what we've been doing so good. We've been just been on the fastball, but in a certain lane, either it be hunt it closer, hunt it up, hunt it middle, hunt it up in a way to make you not swing at cutters and sliders in, go up against certain players so you don't have to swing at the changeups below the zone. That's just what we talk about daily on in the hitters meetings. And I we've just been applying it really, really well in games and sticking to our plans. And, you know, baseball, I mean, you can really break it down. It's just hitting it and catching it and throwing it. You, you, you can make it harder than it is, but when you can try and simplify little things in, in the course of an approach or a plan, it can make things just a tad bit easier. And I think that's when you have certain guys that are so good at controlling strike zones, it just puts so much pressure and especially over a course of a seven game series, if you can get into bullpens quicker, it just makes it harder throughout the course of those seven games. Uh, and we just, that's what I thought we did a heck of a job in against the Mets is controlling the strike zone, getting into bullpens early in the series to really um, set up, you know, different, different matchups. And it's just when you can get a guy on base every single inning, it felt like that's what we were doing. It's just harder. It's more stressful pitches, more stressful innings. Um, Guys get tired quicker. Uh, I thought that was just a heck of a job by our guys in, in the NLCS. Thank you. Yep. Next question is from Fabiana. Yeah, go ahead, Fabian. Well, you said that nicely. Yeah, you said it properly. Um, um, with your ankle, is it in a place right now where like you're able to get through sort of the work that you want to with your swing to get it right? Um, I was, yeah, I didn't hit yesterday. I just came to the field yesterday and just did, you know, the three, four hours of treatment. Um, you know, I, I, I was in a good place on game six. Um, I hit for about a couple hours uh, during the course of that day, trying to work on my swing. Um, it, it's just tough. You know, my, my, I kind of roll on my front foot when I hit and it's not able to roll right now. So it's more of just, you know, just trying to work through that and trying to find a spot where I can. And, um, you know, walking into the field today, obviously feel uh, better than I did a couple of days ago. So, 
Uh, I feel like I'm in a good spot to be able to do the work on my swing today and work hard uh, and hopefully be able to do that the next couple of days and give myself uh, a great chance on game one. And rolling on that front foot, is that maybe something that's maybe tied to the power for you when it comes to your swing? Uh, it's, I don't really look at power. I look at my swings cutting through the zone. You'll never have power if your swings cutting through the zone. And my swing on game five, when I hit the ground, if you, like I hit the ground and I, I usually go into my front foot and then turn. In game five, I was hitting and then spinning because of my foot when my ankle was not allowing me to do what I wanted it to do. So that was why it kind of led into game six that I wasn't going to play because it was like one of the first times where I felt like my ankle, ankle had compromised my swing. Um, so I think that's why we kind of, that was one of the big reasons. But, um, you know, right now, and I, I feel pretty good that I can get into my front foot and hopefully I can do that and fit, be the swing. And then, you know, I'm just trying to hit singles. If power comes, it comes. Um, but with a good swing, that's where power comes. I just don't have any power right now because my swing is cutting through the zone. Like, I mean, we've, you, you and I and Bill and Jack and Juan and Dave, we've all talked about through the course of the year, uh, my swing has been cutting a little bit. So just get the ball, swing back up through the middle and then the power will come. Got time for a couple more. Go ahead, Dylan. Hey, Freddie. Hey. Um, is that a question about uh, uh, Mookie? You know, uh, obviously when he came back, uh, there were some changes, you know, in terms of, right, his place in the batting order, got moved out of his customary leadoff spot. Uh, you know, he went back right from shortstop back to right field. Um, you know, the fact that he kind of did this so, like, graciously and kind of not made it an issue – I guess, A, what did that tell you about him? And B, what kind of impact do you think that's had in kind of the clubhouse culture that you guys have now? Yeah, I mean, I think you saw a little bit last year, him going through, going to second base and going back and forth in right field. Um, it's just a player and a person who will do anything to win. And um, I think you've seen that over the course of his five years here. He'll do anything to win, to win. And when that kind of thing that happened in spring training, moving Gavin back to second and him moving to short him like, that's just who he is. It's just, it makes us, I mean, every time I say it, it's just Mookie Betts, the man can do anything he wants. He's one of the, I think one of the best athletes I've ever seen on a field. Um, he's one of the only people that could probably do this, what he has done throughout the course of the year. Um, and when you have a bunch of people who don't worry about the name on their back and all they care about is the name on the front. And that's kind of what we have in this clubhouse. A lot of guys that are like that, it brings everybody together because it shows that everyone's just trying to do everything they can possibly to win a ball game. And we saw it early on in spring training with Mookie and throughout the course of the year, you just see, arguably top three, maybe, I mean, you got Shohei, Aaron, and Juan, and Mookie, just doing everything he possibly can to be the best version of himself at shortstop. Um, it just, that just shows the character of that, of that player. And it just carries over to the rest of the team. And um, when you have someone who's so unselfish like he is, it makes everybody around you that much better. Last one's from Beth Harris. Go ahead, Beth. Hey, Freddie, even with the, uh, days off here for you do you anticipate that it could come down to just literally a game time decision for friday whether you could start or not um I, right now i don't even i'm not really thinking about game time decisions i i don't think it's i think with this time off it's going to be a 100 percent go for me on uh game one and we'll adjust off of that after game one but i don't think there's any question in anybody's mind um that i will be in the lineup for game one thanks freddie yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We now have Dave Roberts available. If you have a question, please use the raise your hand icon. First question is from Kirsten Watson. Go ahead, Kirsten. Hey, Dave. Um, I saw that MLB announced that the game one starter is going to be Jack Flaherty. So one, I guess, congratulations on kind of just that decision. But what does that mean for the team and what led to that decision? 
I think, um, you know, obviously uh, Jack's uh, been really good for us. Um, you know, that last start was standing. Um, Yamamoto will start game two. And I think if you're looking at kind of both those pitchers and what the potential World Series could look like, just giving both those guys the best uh, opportunity to to participate, to pitch, and, and put them in the best spots possible as far as days of rest and things like that. When you think about just what you've learned about Jack and his time in Dodger Blue and really how you saw him handle um, game one of the NLCS, what is it about just his, his performance, his composure on the mound, the intensity, all of that, that you like about how he can set the tone in game one of this series? Well, I, I think that, you know, it's been good. Um, obviously, the experience, um, the way to kind of navigate an outing, um, he's seen it all. And, um, you know, even looking at his last start in New York, I think that, you know, self-admitted that certain parts of that game sped up on him. And I think that's a lesson to be learned. And so I think that with Jack, the experience, that's another experience moment for him that I think that can kind of help him um, in this series right now. So I think that, you know, we got through it. We weathered it. Um, no pun intended. I think he's healthy now. And uh, he'll he'll uh, spit out a good one on uh, Friday. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Next question is from Dave Asse. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Dave. I was uh, I was wondering um, what the chances are of Vesia and Gratterall uh, being part of your bullpen in the World Series, and also just another part of that question to your bullpen. When did you start to realize they had that identity of the self-proclaimed dogs out there? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was certainly self-proclaimed. I don't know who kind of uh, initiated that, but I couldn't agree more with it. Um, I absolutely feel that these guys are dogs. Um, uh, as far as uh, the Vesia uh, Gratterall question, uh, Vesia, I think, is going to throw a live today, uh, today or tomorrow. I think it's today, today or tomorrow. And he's going to throw it to some hitters, but they both are trending in the right direction. But I do feel with both those guys, it's going to be a uh, kind of game time decision as far as when we got to submit, uh, if they're going to be viable or not. Thank you. You got it. Next question is from Juan Toribio. Go ahead, Juan. Hey, Dave. Um, Freddie was just in here talking about he, he feels like he'll be ready to go uh, for game one. Like how much do you think these couple day, these these uh, days off are going to help him uh, moving forward? I think huge. Um, I, I think um, it, it certainly hurt him not being able to, you know, be a part of things and, and certainly, you know, being a part of game six. But appreciating the fact that we got four more days to nurse his ankle back to health. I think there's only upside in that. Um, I, I think uh, mentally, I think uh, he, he's in a good spot, anxious, um, obviously with the ankle. But I, I, I don't doubt the fact that he'll be in there for game one. And, you know, hopefully with these days that we've gotten ourselves out of the woods and we can manage him, you know, throughout the World Series. And then uh, behind Jack, like, how do you see Walker and, and Yamamoto kind of fitting into the, the pitching plan? And, and then obviously the, the, the bullpen game, if, if that's what you guys are going with. Um, there will be a bullpen game. Uh, Yamamoto is going to pitch game two. And I think over the next couple of days, we'll sort of talk through how game three and four look. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Next question is from Fabiana Ardaya. Go ahead. Yeah, Dave, sort of on that, like how do you sort of balance? Obviously, you want Yamamoto to be able to pitch twice in the series along with the fact that you're probably going to have a bullpen game during a stretch of three games in a row. Yeah, um, so I, I think the Yamamoto, Yamamoto piece is pretty easy, uh, giving him a chance to pitch in game two and potentially a game six. Um, and then as far as kind of seeing, you know, how uh, Vesia, Gratterall, um, how game three potentially looks as we go into game three coming off an off day um, is kind of the question, you know, whether it's Walker or bullpen game or vice versa. And then with best Freddie, like, what do you want to see from his swing just in the next couple of days? Just sort of know that he's like in a good spot, obviously not just being healthy enough to be out there, but that his swing is back in a good enough spot for you guys. 
You know, actually, um, before game six, uh, we had a workout, and I thought his swing was trending in the right direction. I think the problem is that once he gets out to play defense, then it sort of takes a downturn. And so that's why we we decided not to uh, play him in game six. Um, but hope, hoping that the four days, um, the swing will continue to get better, the ankle will continue to get better, and he'll be able to withstand playing nine innings. Um, so I do think that, you know, even today he's going to go out there and take some batting practice. I think the swing is going to be in a good place. Again, it's just kind of seeing how long we can kind of sustain that. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Next question is from Dylan Hernandez. Go ahead, Dylan. Hey, Dave. Hi, Dale. Um, I'm getting my starting to get my meetings all kind of mixed up here. But when you guys talked to Mookie about moving back to right field, you know, when he came back from the injury, did you did you do you remember? Did, did you call him, or was that you and Gomes going to go talk to him? How, how did that work out? Um, I, I talked to him on the phone. Um, you know, I might have talked to him on the phone, but you know what, Dylan, I might have had a conversation with at the ballpark as he was getting closer, and that's probably what it was. You know. As he was getting closer to being back to health, um, trying to figure out what position he was going to be at. And I think at that point in time, Gavin sort of established himself as playing pretty well at second base. Miggy was playing really well and kind of by default, just reading the room, it just made a lot of sense. And that's kind of how it started. Now, I'm sure when you have these conversations, right, you, you know, you go in for it, you know, you go into it hoping for the best, preparing for the worst. <laughs> You know, how much better was this than kind of the worst case scenario? And how did, you know, Mookie being kind of so agreeable, I guess, help you better prepare? You know, how much easier did that make you uh, make it for you to kind of prepare the team in September going into the playoffs? I, I it um, having it be Mookie uh, made it 100 percent easier. Um, it was a 100 percent outcome uh, with our conversation. Um, that's sort of, you know speaking for Andrew in the sense of when you commit to a player long term, um, it, it's the character, the makeup, but also Mookie's skill set, him in particular, the ability to be dynamic and to be able to bounce him around the diamond. Um, and so all that sort of allowed for the conversation, the ability to sort of play out as such, um, because we felt that he could do it. We were a better team if he did bounce back out to right field. Um, and so just betting on the fact that he understood, um, what was best for the team and, um, you know, even, even Freddie, you know, just to be able to bounce from third or to fourth, um, you know, things like that. You have high character guys that really bought in and to your question. Now, when guys like that do it, um, everyone else, you know, has to fall in line as far as whatever roles, wherever they hit, um, in the order, if they play or, Start or don't start. Thank you. Yep. Next question is from Bill Plinky. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, Dave. With uh, Vesey and Gratterall, is Gratterall throwing to hitters? He is not going to throw to hitters, but he's going to throw a pen, I think, tomorrow. Fair uh, to say Vesey is more likely then to be on the roster? I, I would say Vesey is more likely, but we're going to, you know, push it as far as we can. Um, and, you know, it'll be a final kind of, uh, Friday morning situation where we got to make a decision on those two guys. And what about uh, Miguel Rojas? Where's his status going to be? I, I think Miggy Rowe is sort of with those guys. I mean, and I, I don't really know a percentage, but I do know that, um, you know, I, 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 I really feel that it was the right decision not having him on the CS given his health. Um, he's made some strides. Um, I know he's going to do everything he can to be on the World Series roster, but we still got to be certain that um, he can run, he can defend the way he can defend. So um, I'm hopeful, but uh, not certain right now. And all the attention uh, for this series is on you know the big name stars on both teams, but we just saw Tommy Edmond win the LCS MVP. How, uh, you know, can the supporting cast be the decisive factors? I think so, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you said, as you said, um, Tommy proved that that can be the case. Um, you know, it seems like 
the stars were getting on base and, and Tommy was had the ability to drive those runs in with some big hits. Um, and I think in big series, that's a lot of times um, how it plays out where managers, pitchers um, are more reluctant to let the stars beat them. And um, and it sometimes plays out that way. But like you said, Bill, there's going to be plenty of star power uh, on the field this series. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Next question is from David Lennon. Go ahead, David. Hey, Dave. Uh, a number of the high-profile Yankees you don't have a ton of experience with just because you guys haven't crossed paths very often, with the exception of Juan Soto, you know, being in the same league with him for a while and in the same division. Do you, do you think, Dave, that being in that environment he's in now with the Yankees, with Judge, contract here, that he actually has the potential to be a more dangerous hitter than you may have seen in the past? Um, I, I hope he can't be more dangerous uh, <laughs> than he's been uh, than he was in the uh, ALCS. Um, we we've seen him uh, obviously a lot. Uh, saw him in, in the postseason with the Nats, um, and uh, he killed us then. So uh, guys like him, they just love the big stage, the big moment, and uh, you just got to hope that uh, you know keep guys off base when he gets up. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Next question is from Eric Steven. Go ahead, Eric. Dave, uh, just checking in on uh, Gavin Lux. How's his hip doing, and do you sort of expect him to be in there for game one? I do, Eric. I expect him to be in there. Um, I think we did a good job of trying to pick our spots to get him in there, to get a pinch hit here or there, um, but not to kind of regress with the, with the, uh, the hamstring, the hip flexor. Um, so I do think that you know, with these days off, come Friday, uh, he should he'll be a full go. And I know you guys still have another, obviously another series to play, but um, there's only like three guys who've won four pennants in their first nine years since 1900: uh, Sparky Anderson and Frank Chance and you. I was just wondering, you ever get a chance to sort of reflect on what you've sort of accomplished to this point? Um. Uh... You know what, Eric? I I don't do a good job. I got to research Frank Chance. <laughs> um, you know, I, I had a chance to meet Sparky Anderson when I was a minor league player uh, with the Tigers back in the day. And so I, I think, I guess, just being fortunate, I guess, Eric, and the more you start hearing some Hall of Famers uh, and being in that same conversation, um, it, it's it's mind-blowing. Thanks. Yep. We got time for a couple more. Go ahead, Megan. Hey, Dave, uh, what has Ty Oscar meant to this team with his impact in the lineup and in the clubhouse? And what is it like uh, to see a veteran like him uh, finally get his chance at the World Series? Um, he, he's meant a lot. Um, I think Ty Oscar, I think the one thing about him is uh, the consistency. Um, consistency of, of how he approaches a game, um, how he approaches sort of life. He's very uh, easygoing, extremely competitive. And, um, you know, he was, I, I give him a lot of credit because, you know, I say this a lot. He left money on the table to sign with the Dodgers and he wanted a chance to be around some of the best players in the game and learn from these guys. And so he's always, since day one of spring training, he's watched Shohei, Freddie, Mookie really intently and taking things from those guys to kind of enhance his game. But uh, he, he's another guy that just loves the big moment, the spotlight. And uh, he came up with some big hits uh, in game six for us and, and has done all year. But uh, he's been certainly uh, very additive for our organization. And what has the team approach been at the plate that has resulted in uh, success with both the small ball and the long ball in this postseason run? Um, yeah, I, I think it's been – a collective, uh, you know, you know, approach to, to scoring runs, to creating stress. Um, you know, if it calls for getting a butt down, stealing a base, getting a guy over, hitting to the opposite field. Um, but I think at the crux, it's controlling the strike zone and, um, you know, scaring pitchers out of the strike zone when they throw it over the plate. Um, Try to hit it hard somewhere, and if they don't, then take your 90 feet. Thanks, Dave. Yep. <clears throat> Next question is from Bob Nightingale. Go ahead, Bob. 
Hey, Dave, the, uh, I was wondering, how, how, how well do you know Aaron Boone? And have you guys talked about the difficulty and challenge of, of all the pressure of managing in L.A. and managing in New York? So uh, Aaron and I have a, have a good history. Uh, we played against each other in college. Um, he went to SC, I went to UCLA. Uh, we've got a lot of mutual friends. Um, so um, we, we sort of have similar circles. Um, I know that we talked uh, before he got uh, the Yankees job. And um, so we, we have a very uh, good relationship. Uh, during the season, uh, we talked a little bit. I think we talked. We talked a little bit when we played him this uh, this summer. Um, haven't reached out in the postseason either way. Um, so we'll catch up on Friday, though. It's going to be exciting. And you guys ever talked about you know your, your big stolen base for the Red Sox and his big home run for the Yankees? Uh, you know what? Um, we don't because uh, yeah. So I would probably give him a lot of grief if he brought up that homer to beat the Sox and he would return the favor to me if I brought up the stolen base so uh, we don't talk about that very often but I do think it's it's very cool that you know we played against each other in college and now um, at, you know as college rivals and then now you know you could just see that this rivalry with uh, you know the Dodgers and the Yankees it's uh, pretty special it goes way back um, and so now we're doing it again uh, you know, opposing one another. So it's a pretty good story. Thanks so much, Dave. Yeah. All right. Last one's from Steve Henson. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Dave. So Bob just alluded to that, but that was 30 plus years ago that you and Aaron competed against each other in college. You were both, I think, 19 years old when, when the first time you got UCLA, UCLA and USC uh, played. What do you remember about those games? And, um, were you friends off the field or didn't Bruins and Trojans mingle back then? No, we weren't friends. Um, I think at that point in time, I didn't care too much for him. Um, I don't think he cared too much for me. And I do recall they probably got the best of us back in the day. So it probably enhanced my distaste uh, for him and the Trojans. But uh, he was always a heck of a ball player. Uh, you knew. Um, and we played against each other in, in, in the big leagues. And so he was always a smart baseball player. Obviously, great pedigree. Um, so you knew he was going to be in the game for a long time and uh, just couldn't be more excited for him. Well, how cool is it that 30 years later, you're, you know, you guys are veteran managers facing each other in the World Series? Yeah, it, it's really cool. I just wish uh, Coach Gillespie was still around. That would be that'd be great. I know my coach, uh, Coach Adams, still here. But, uh, yeah, that would have been a great moment. It's pretty remarkable. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We have Max Muncy now available. Please use the raise your hand icon. First questions from Ron Blum. Go ahead, Ron. Hey, Max. How are you? Thanks for doing this. As you face the same relievers in a postseason series more and more, do you think that helps you? And also, are you and other hitters using the traject machine to get ready for the variety of relievers that can come in? Um, you know, I, at this point in the season, um, facing the same guy, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, say it gives you an advantage because, uh, you know, you can obviously attack people multiple different ways, but um you know there is a little bit of an advantage to seeing just how the stuff plays um you know for example you take edwin diaz from the mets he has a fastball that um has a lot of vertical movement to it it feels like it's going up all the time and so you, you the more you see that the more you know what it feels like but then he can also just drop the slider in underneath at any time so um it doesn't really you know help you out in terms of hitting but it, it does give you an advantage in, in terms of seeing the ball and uh um, you know, the, the traject is awesome. It allows you to see a pitcher's motion, but uh, there's only so much it can do to actually simulate what the ball feels like coming in. Thank you. Next question is from Dylan Hernandez. Go ahead, Dylan. Hey, Max. Um, you know, I was just asking Freddie about this too, but, um, you know, with Mookie, we kind of saw him after he came back from the injury, move out of his customary leadoff spot. You know, he went back from right from going short back to right field. 
um, you know, when, when one of your superstars kind of is that like flexible, uh, you know, what does that kind of do for, you know, clubhouse culture and, you know, maybe, right, help you guys create the environment that you guys have right now? Yeah, it's huge. Um, you know, one of the one of the things you always worry about when you have a guy that has, uh, you know, a name and and just the the accomplishments and talents about him, like someone like Mookie does, is you you know he wants to be the leadoff hitter. He wants to play you know certain positions, and you tell him he has to go somewhere else. You always won't worry about that causing conflict. But um, you know, thankfully he he bought into it. He wants to win just as much as any you know any of us in this clubhouse and. Uh, you know, I think he sees how everyone else is acting in the clubhouse and that really helps him just accept it. And, you know, there's never going to be any question from any of us about, about about Mookie. We knew that he would do whatever whatever it takes to help the team win. And, um, you know, he's proven that time and time again. And, um, you know, him moving to the infield this year was about helping us win um, as much as anything. And, uh, you know, so to ask him to go back to right field, that was good to him. He felt like that helped us put us in the best spot to win. And that was a, that was a no brainer in his, in his mind. Thank you. Thanks. Questions from Kirsten Watson. Go ahead, Kirsten. Max, when you guys just look at what these five days are looking like as a group, how have you all approached them and how similar has it been? I know when Freddie just spoke, he had mentioned, obviously the watch party is that part is different, but just with how you, you prepared NLDS, how you guys took advantage of those days. How are you either using that in a similar way or just what is the focus heading into this matchup? Yeah. Um, you know, we, we had yesterday off and it was a, it was a good day to have off. Uh, you know, these, these couple of days that we're going to have off is going to be huge. Get a lot of guys, uh, you know, with some, some bruises healed up a little bit. You know, you mentioned Freddie had allowed him to get his ankle back and, you know, you hope that everything's going to go a lot better. Um, from on Friday, just having, you know, almost a week off uh, since the last time he played. And it's just, uh, you know, I think for us, we got to use it. We got to use it to the best of our ability to get guys healthy and uh, and prepare properly. Obviously, you can't treat it the same as the five days we had after the season. Um, you know, we're I think we're going to talk about it a bunch today as a group and see, um, you know, what we all want to do together as a team. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure there's going to be some pretty fun ideas out there. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to hear what we can come up with. There's obviously there's familiarity amongst these two teams, but not as much. Just considering two different leagues, um, you play once a year. What is, um, I guess, the biggest thing you guys are kind of looking at heading into this matchup? Uh, you know, the same thing we take into any series. You got to look at, you know, you got to look at this the, from the offensive standpoint. You got to look at the pitching staff. You got to look at, you know, what they do as a group, how they like to attack certain hitters, how we think they're going to do things. Um, you know, we, we got to prepare the same way we prepare for anyone else. Uh, I know this is the World Series, but, um, you know, as I always say, we're, we're, we're playing ourselves as much as we are the other team. And so we got to just, you know, go about it the exact same way that we would um, any other series. We got to make sure we're preparing the right way, looking at the right stuff, having the right mindset heading into it and having the right game plan. Thank you. Next question is from Dave Asse. Go ahead, Dave. With that being said, with that being said, Max, uh, do you feel like you guys have an advantage that you've been here before, whether it's been together or guys that have been to the World Series on other teams? Do you feel like you have an advantage in in that respect? Uh, I know both franchises have been here a lot, but a lot of those guys have not been been here before. Um, you know, it, it's hard to really like quantify how much experience plays into it at this time of year. Um, you know, the World Series is obviously a whole different spectacle, but, um, you know, th that's a very good team over there with very good players, a lot of veterans. Um, you know, I wouldn't expect that the stage is going to be too big for them. And that's, a, uh, you know, you're talking about a team that plays in New York and it's, uh, you know, they've they've dealt with that all year, all year long uh, and especially that franchise. So, you know, it's 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 a tough question into as to how much experience plays into it at this time of year but um you know if, if anything i would say one thing we do have an advantage is we've been having to go coast to coast already something that they haven't done they've stayed pretty local in, in their playoff series and so um you know if there is one thing i would say experience would come into play at is that you're talking about different sleep schedules different you know the time change long flights different weather um you know that that is something that we do have an experience with thank you 
Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Max, the Yankees and Dodgers were 1-2 in lowest chase rates this season. How important is that stat to a modern offense and specifically in the postseason? Well, at the at the end of the day, that's the whole point of uh, hitting is you you want to swing at strikes and you want to take balls. And that's, you know, that's really just the most basic philosophy you can have. And it's obviously a lot, you know, harder to do than to just say, hey, we're going to swing at strikes and take balls. But, you know, that's something that we've preached for a long time here. And we've we finally got a group buying into it. And it's, uh, um, you know, it's shown we've had a lot of guys on base had a lot of time. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of chances to score runs, and um, you know, ultimately, that's the that's the the key to winning the game. And how much? I think it's an innate part of your game, but how much of uh, of not chasing and controlling the strike zone can be learned? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I I can't tell you how many times I've been asked that question. It's uh, um, you know, the biggest the biggest thing I can say to that is. A little bit of it can be learned in terms of just you got to learn how to buy into an approach at the plate. Um, you know, I've seen it in the past where some guys have said, I got to start walking more. And so they just start auto taking certain pitches and, you know, they end up taking a lot of a lot of really good pitches to hit that are over the heart of the plate because they're they're saying, I want to, you know, auto take and see more pitches. And that's not the way you go about it. Um, you know, that was that's all what I've always said. The key to, to me is that I just I, I, I'm very stubborn to my approach. I stick to my approach and that allows me that. Hey, they might throw, you know, a strike, but it's not the pitch I'm looking for. It's not the zone I'm looking for. So I'm not going to swing at it. And, you know, more often than not, that allows me to take the pitches that are just off versus, you know, you know, auto taking the one that's right down the middle. Thank you. You got time for one more. Go ahead, Beth. Hey, Max, what kind of lift do you think you guys will get from having Freddie back in the lineup? I mean, you're talking about one of the most consistent hitters over the last, you know, 10, 12 years, 14 years, however long it's been for Freddie. It's yeah, it's 300 every year. It's it's, you know, a ton of doubles, a bunch of home runs, drives in 100 runs. It's, you know, you're just talking about an absolute complete player on the offensive side. And uh, to get him back, to have that in the lineup, just add that depth. And, uh, you know, on top of that, the, the, the key hits that he's had, the clutch hits that he's had in his career at this time of year, it's uh you know, you can't really can't really quantify how how valuable that is. And we, we know how valuable he is to us. So we're excited to have him back. Thanks, Max. Thanks, everybody. Yes, we have Jack Flaherty now available. If you have any questions, please use the raise your hand icon. First question is from Dave Assay. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Jack, I know you've already had some special moments wearing this uniform, but what does it mean to you to be able to start game one of the World Series for the Dodgers? It means I get a pitch first. Um, it'll be fun, be exciting. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to Friday. Uh, there's uh, there's no bigger stage than this, and it's, you know, what we all wanted as kids and, you know, the uh, position we wanted to be in. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't really have any words for him. Just looking forward to Friday. Hey, Jack, you've known Tommy Edmond a long time. L.A., I think, just got introduced to him. What makes him so special of a player, and what makes him so special for this team and a great fit? Man, Tommy, Tommy's a, Tommy's a dog, and uh, he always has been since he, since he came up when, when we were in St. Louis. And, and what he was able to do in 2019, filling in, uh, you know, he, he filled in at second, third. Um, it didn't matter. And he was unbelievable defensively. And then the bat came along as well. And he could, you know, put really good at bats together. He does it from the left side and the right side. And then, you know, they started moving around even more, put him in center field. And and he excelled there. And he, then he excelled at short, too. So it didn't matter where he played. He was probably the best defensive second baseman that I've played with. Won a gold glove there. And then has just continued no matter where you have put him to be unbelievable. He's an unbelievable shore, unbelievable in center. Um, and then he just, you know, the, the dude works really hard and, you know, he, he, he's really versatile and does a lot of things. And it's something that I think every ball club uh, would like to have. Next question is from Kirsten Watson. Go ahead, Kirsten. 
Jack, when you, I know we talked about just um, your last outing in the NLDS and just some of the frustration, frustrations and um, kind of not making the adjustments as quick as you'd wanted to. How do you just approach going into this matchup against the Yankees and kind of what is, what adjustments have you been able to make and kind of things you're working on this week preparing for it? Yeah, I mean, kind of like you would any other start um, during the regular season. Um, you know, I keep that same, you know, kind of work ethic and same approach to everything that I do during the season. And, and you know, for me, every game during the season is, is you know, the, the biggest game of the year. So it doesn't change um, going into the playoffs and going into the World Series and the mindset stays the same. The adjustments start to start and pitch to pitch are um, – always a little different between starts. Some you got to tweak a little bit, some tweak a little bit more, but it's not, you don't have to, you don't have to reinvent everything. It's just uh, figuring out what those, what the small adjustments are and what they might be. And, and uh, you know, these, these couple of days off to, to dive into some things and look at it um, been good. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's about figuring it out and, and keeping the same approach that we have all year. I know that you started this year in the American League with the Tigers and with talking to some of the other guys earlier today. There's obviously familiarity with the Yankees just because of the big names on the team. But what is just your kind of familiarity and did you have any earlier this year facing them? Um, yeah, I, I didn't get to face them. We went to New York, um, watched, uh, uh, with, with Detroit and watched them go at them and and face them. And, you know, it's a really good team. You know, when you end up at this point, there's two teams left. I mean, really towards the end of the playoffs, every, every team you face is you're going to get everybody's best shot. So um, it's, it's one of those things that you look forward to and you got to look forward to facing, you know, uh, the best of the best that are out there. And, you know, they've got some guys that have been studs for a really long time and, um, and, and guys who have continued to do it and have, and are just they're they're really damn good, and uh, there's not much more to it than that. It's uh, it's uh, it's just going to be uh, an incredible matchup. Thank you. Next questions from Juan Toribio. Go ahead. Hey Jack, you you've kind of talked about how the deadline was just kind of like a big waiting game for you. Um, as you and kind of family and friends kind of followed along throughout that that craziness of the deadline, like did you ever did you ever get to the point where you thought you might have gone to the Yankees? And just how glad are you that of how things worked out? Um, I, I didn't really give much to my family in terms of what I was hearing um, with things going on, and uh, you know, there's more to all that with the uh, with the deadline that I just have kind of held on to and. You know things turned out the way that they did, and uh, you know we're we're here, we're with LA, and and you know I couldn't be, you know it's crazy thing I could have been on the other side of this, but um, I'm you know happy for the situation that I'm in and, and being a part of this team and the guys that, that that we have and and the run that we've been able to go on and what we still have have left going forward. Thanks, Jack. Next question is from Bill Shaken. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, hey, Jack. Do you have a first memory or an early memory as a kid of coming to Dodger Stadium? Um, you know, I've been asked that, and I, I can't think of, like, a very specific, like, first memory or or, or first game or, or one of those. Like, I remember a bunch of games from high school. Um, I think some of the earliest memories – would be coming here, you know, being in, being in Little League and coming here. I always had a Little League night, and we'd sit in left field, and it felt like it was always against the Giants, and Bonds would just get booed left and right. And, uh, you know, that was something that was uh, – I, I was those those are some of the things that I remember was was being out there sitting in the, sitting in those left field pavilions and uh, um, listening to, to Bonds get booed when that was when the rivalry was, was – was Dodgers Giants and that was the heavy part of it. But um in terms of like a early a specific one, no, I just I just remember coming. I can't really remember a specific game. Yeah, just to have the opportunity now, I'm sure you see fifty thousand people there representing LA every night. To be somebody representing LA on the mound, there's only one guy who can do that in game one of the World Series. What does that feel like? Uh, like I said, I mean, they get to pitch first, and uh, it's it's an opportunity to go out and 
instead of town and uh you know make some adjustments after what you know the, the last game that I had and and be able to set us up for kind of the rest of the series and uh it, it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a grind it's gonna be you know hard fought between both sides and uh you know at the end of the day we're gonna give everything that we got thank you next question is from Bill Plunkett go ahead Bill yeah Jack your velocity was down a tick or two in that game five start again. I know we make too much of velocity, but when something like that happens, what do you, what does it signal to you? Uh, usually it's just timing. It's usually just timing. And I think going throughout this year, I've had some, some starts go like that where it's kind of up and down and, you know, I was able to make corrections going to the next one. Um, maybe not right in that moment because it just, sometimes it just comes down to timing and the way everything's in sync and, Sometimes you're, you know, on some of those, those fastballs, you start pushing the ball, your arm gets kind of lost in space and uh, you don't get the same drive behind it. And, or, you know, for me, my lower half gets off a little bit. And um, at, at a certain point, when you get into games like that and you don't feel quite in sync, it just becomes, you just got to compete and, and give everything you got, no matter what your stuff is. And so, Stop, you know, at that point, I stopped paying attention to, you know, velocity and, and stuff and just try to execute with, with what I got. And um, sometimes you're able to make those adjustments in, in game and sometimes you're not. And you just you just go out and compete and you save and you save those adjustments for for in between. So um, it, it's it, it usually just boils down to timing and, uh, you know, trying to get the arm and, and the whole body in sync to, to just sync up. So that's uh that's been one of the, the focuses over the last, I guess, couple of days and really losing track of what day it is at this point. But, um, yeah, it's just doing that, you know, do some work in the bullpen tomorrow and get ready for Friday. I think it's Tuesday, but I'm not sure either. When you're facing a lineup like the Yankees with those, you know, three big stars, just like the Dodgers have at the top of their lineup, what's the danger for a pitcher of – overemphasizing that and and then uh, having the so-called less dangerous hitters uh, bite you? I don't think you can look at anybody else as, as less dangerous and in any lineup. You look at our lineup top to bottom, especially when you're able to you get those guys on towards the, towards the bottom of the order and set it up for the top. Um, that's where things – that's where you get into some, you know, interesting – tougher situations and you got to pitch through traffic with those guys coming up. So it's, it's about executing your game plan. It's about, you know, treating every hitter like it's, you know, you got to treat every hitter the same and go out and attack them and, you know, try to go out and execute your game plan and, and you know, get ahead, stay ahead and um, not make things too complicated, not try too hard. Thanks, Jack. Next question is from Jack Harris. Go ahead. Hey, Jack, when you talk about, you know, making adjustments this week and coming out of the last start? Like, what does that look like specifically for you? And, and where does a lot of that work take place? Uh, dive into some film, dive into some uh, pitch selection, uh, different things of that nature. You know, like rewatching that game, like I said, I felt that the game sped up on me in that inning. Uh, I, you know, I was multiple times one pitch away from getting out of it where it's, it's still either three to one or, or, or five to one instead of it getting to, to eight to one. Um, you know, you give up the home, I give the homer to Pete in the first, he puts a good swing on a ball. They get some more guys on, we get out of it, keep it right there, put up a zero the next inning. And I'm a pitcher two away from, from that inning being different. And that's, that's kind of the way that, that this game goes sometimes is it's usually you look at it and you're one pitch away here or there from, that game being a little different and, uh, you know, but honey came in and did an unbelievable job the rest of that game. Um, but I think it just comes down to looking at it and, you know, understanding that it's, it's, you know, we, it was, it was right there. And if we can control a couple more things and, uh, be in a little bit of a better spot. And then like going into a start like this, like, do you take time at all to just kind of reflect on, you know, how different things are for you compared to, probably where you were at this time last year, just going from, you know, you know, the changes you talked about wanting to make last off season to now pitching game one of a world series. Yeah. You know, I had somebody text me that uh, the other day say, you know, what a difference a year makes and thinking about, you know, how last year went and, you know, 
being at home and and watching watching the World Series versus being in the situation now and you know the year that I was able to have and you know turn into a bounce back and 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 execute better and just do a lot of things better and it, it comes down to hard work and uh, the more you work and the more you stay disciplined you know things seem to come your way. Thank you. Got time for one more. Go ahead, Kerry. And Jack, uh, you know, so much has happened for you in the last two and a half months. You know, you're pitching in front of your hometown team. You're pitching in the NLDS and the NLCS and now the World Series. How are you able to kind of micro focus on the moment and get away from all the noise that surrounds all of that? The big people around you. And I've been very lucky to have that. Um, in my family, for my mom, my brother, my my close friends, um, that group has been uh, my rock and my foundation for a very, very long time. And I'm really lucky to have them in my life and, you know, be able to call some people family and, 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 and pick up the phone, talk to them whenever. But, you know, they, uh, they, they, they always remind me at the end of the day that, you know, I'm, I'm, never it's it's never as big of a situation as everybody else is is going to make it seem you know it's, it's 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 awesome it's great this, this opportunity is phenomenal it's what we've all wanted but when you when you sit down with your with your close group and it just feels like a regular day and it feels like you're 15 years old again sitting with them and, and talking and things haven't changed um it just kind of puts things into perspective how good was that support group after your last start uh you know they they gave me the day because they know that I, I don't really want to talk and I won't really have anything nice to say to them on um, on that night. And then, uh, you know, come the next day, it's the conversation shifts to let's talk about, you know, college football and, and getting ready for, uh, you know, football on Sunday, um, even though we've got game six coming up. And it's, it's stuff like that where it just, you know, it's, it's uh, just – normal life and it's not baseball is everything and baseball is the most in, in, important thing but to them I'm you know we're just those are those are my best friends and my family and it's like yeah it's it's cool and all but you know we got a we get some 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 good football to watch this weekend and that's uh that helps you move forward a little bit. Thank you Jack. Thanks Jack. Thanks everybody